Got a chunk. Look at that. Beautiful fish. What's good, everyone? This is Travis Hayton with Virginia Highlands Outdoors, and we're bringing you another episode of Appalachian Bison. And in this episode, we're going to concentrate on fall fishing, and specifically November fall fishing. Now, September and October, uh, you know, they're explosive months. Um, the you know the fall feeding frenzy is just starting. Uh, they're really uh, starting to school up and slam bait fish and, uh, you know, run them into the shoals and into the banks. However, in November, things get a lot tougher for the anglers. First of all, you're dealing with the time change, so the sun sets, you know, really early in the evening. And for the working fishermen, that makes it really, really hard to get to the river or to the lake or pond, uh, what have you, in time. Um, you know, if you get there, you might have a couple, a few minutes. Uh, here recently, um, you know, we've been fishing the weekends, and it's hunting season too, so I'm trying to get in some hunting, get in some fishing, uh, get videos for both. But with the time change, we all know it's hard to do what you want to do and get done what needs to get done all at the same time with limited light. So you just make do the best you can and get a free moment, you know. And try and make it to the water, try and make it out to the woods. Another thing that makes river fishing for smallmouth so tough in November is it's usually the first month with considerable temperature drops in the water. You know, you might have a water temperature at 65 and then you'll get a massive cold front and in a couple of days, next thing you know it's 40 some degrees and a couple of days later the next thing you know it's 20 some degrees. Here in the Appalachian Mountains in southwest Virginia, we have a lot of deep hollows and valleys and really tall mountain ranges and ridges. And it can really hold the, you know, the cold air quite a bit, which contributes to the um, significant temperature drops. But the good thing is there, uh, the temperature will fluctuate. It'll go down, it'll rise, it'll go down, it'll rise. So one thing you can do is check the usgs.com website, find your local stream. Oh, I had one. And then look for the uh, the temperature readouts, the oh, gauge height, and the cubic feet per second on the flow oh, rate. On. And this information can be crucial to you know getting on the fish on a good day because some days you'll go out there and there'll be nothing, nothing will hit, and the next day they'll be tearing it up. And what it is, if you read the uh, the charts. The temperature readout is like every 15 minutes on most stations. So if you can find a considerable increase where it's kind of consistently rising, and it may just be one or two degrees, this will trigger a feeding frenzy uh, for the day. Um, so kind of check your weather, compare the times that you caught fish, go back and look to see what the temperature was, was it rising, uh, what, what was going on. Compare all that data and it'll actually help you land more fish because November fishing is more like bass hunting. You're, you're not really a bass fisherman at this point. You're a bass hunter. So being able to understand the conditions will put you on more fish. Down here at North Fork and check out that hog Dusty just caught. Beauty. Look at that fish. Man, that's got some awesome marks.
Now this was early one morning before work. I'd kind of been bummed out because of the time change and not really being able to fish in the evenings for a couple of weeks. So I decided to get up early one morning and hit the river uh, for you know about 30 minutes or so before I had to take off and uh, go clock in. And boy am I glad I went up to the river this morning. Uh, this was November 18th, 2016. Later in the video, I actually, after I catch a fish, I actually say it's the 17th, but technically it was the 18th. It was 40 degrees out here that morning, and it was it was chilly. Um, I was actually just going out to test some of my mystery tackle box lures that I just got, and uh, throw a couple other things just to see what they were hitting. And what I found out is from the past couple days of fishing, um, hair jigs, uh, you know, hand tied hair jigs or bucktail jigs and spinner baits, uh, they've been tearing it up. I've been getting a lot of hits on it. Now the hits, some will be really hard hits. Others are just kind of like love taps. They're just, they're a little, the smaller fish are a little bit lazy. They're kind of hungry. They sort of want to eat, but not really. Uh, but when the big fish find it, uh, they're gonna they're gonna smack it really good. So try some bucktail jigs, some spinner baits, uh, maybe even a few square bill crank baits if you're in a place in a river where you can actually fish them without getting hung up. And uh, you'll oh, do you got off. Come they're pretty on. good. Are you serious? You seen swirl back there? Let's see if we can go back and get. Please Jesus, that felt good. Nah. Now I got hung up. Let's see if we can get a reaction. Things are always against me. Oh, I can't believe I missed that fish. Now, I know many of you have been in the same situation where you miss a fish and you go for a follow-up cast with a different lure and then just something keeps you from getting to that fish. Um, it happens more times than I would like, but that's fishing, you know, that's, that's real fishing. But this was actually a blessing in disguise. By me getting hung up on this uh, log and rock pile in front of me, um, actually forced me to move up because I wanted to try and, you know, get the jig undone. Um, I didn't actually plan on walking up here, but man, I'm glad I did. Um, it, it's wild how some days things will just lead you to the right spot. Um, it's just just the way fishing is. That's why they call it fishing and not catching. So, um, you know, I was really needing to leave to go to work right here. And in a minute, I checked my phone, and you'll hear me say, I only got about a minute left. And I throw a cast out, and you'll see what happens uh, coming up just as soon as I get this unhung. Hi. I got about a minute. Let's see if I can get this. Round fish three. Oh, that's a good one. Look here, big boy. Woo! Yes! Look at that chunk. Look at that chunk. Woo! Awesome. What a way to start the morning. I knew it. Thank you, Lord. That's a good fish right there. He's only about, say, uh, uh, 16. But that's a good three pounder. Looks like chunky. I don't know. It might be two and three quarter. On the mystery tackle box. 
jig that I got made by Gapin. It's a real crawfish jig. Let's get a picture of him real quick. Or her. This is a female. I don't know why I keep calling it a him. Get my camera up here toward the river. Come on, camera, work with me. Work with me. All right, here's a quick screenshot of the water temperatures for that day. And as you can see, it was uh, consistently rising on a, um, you know, a slow rise, but it was enough to, to trigger the fish. So that goes to show you just a little bit of temperature change in the positive direction. Right, one long one here. It's a great thing. November 17th, 40 some degrees out here. And we got a chunk. Got a chunk. Look at that. Beautiful fish. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Let's see if we can get one more. Boy, he hit that thing like a ton. How'd I pull that off? And you can see this tree running out through here. Let's see if we can pull one more before we gotta go. I'm gonna be late for work. That got me fired up. I knew when I seen that line kind of go slack. Oh, I missed another. I missed him again. Pick it up, buddy. Ah, come on, now we can get one more real quick. Did he keep it? Nope. Getting a little too impatient, ain't I? But I gotta go, I gotta go. Come on, one more cast. There's always one more cast. And I'm not hitting where I want to. Oh, man. That was a chunk.
This jig is awesome. Or is the way it goes down? It goes down the same every time. Fishing holes clean, people. If you leave your stuff behind, one day you're gonna come here and it's gonna say no trespassing. It's not gonna be your fault. People gonna have respect for others. They worked hard to pay for this land. Don't mess it up. Gaping real crawfish juice. Now, get a view from when I was just a fish. Damn. We can see the tree running out. It was right over here. Right off the edge. Now they're sticking the close to cover. I'd say he was probably seven foot deep there. Out in the middle, maybe six, five. -ish. My wife and I went back the next evening on Saturday and the, the bite was a lot tougher. The wind was, uh, you know, kicking down this uh, valley here and it's actually causing the river to look like it's flowing backwards. It's actually headed down towards the bridge. So it was a strange cold situation or conditions. And I tell my wife, I think they're about done for the day. Done for the and boy was I wrong. It's never no win November when you're smallmouth fishing on the river. Now here I was throwing a green, orange, and black spinnerbait with the silver Colorado blade. And man, he hammered it. It was awesome. I think it's the same fish I caught this uh, yesterday morning. Yeah, it had that? Yeah. You're, you're kidding me. It's the same one? No, this one's small. See you on the video. We have some dark. Oh, yeah, he's got it on both sides. It's pretty like pearlescent.
hard in the water. River treasure, baby. Just happened to look down. Mm-hmm. 